What's up guys, it's your host Spartanic Arts DxD back with another high school DxD related video. And today we have what if Issei went solo part 5. And we've been killing it on the like goal, so let's try to go for 1000 likes once again. Thank you so much for all those likes, it really means the world to me. And if you guys want to know exactly when I upload slash my upload schedule, click the little blue button right next to the subscribe button. I also added a new membership tab for $0.99, so that would be wonderful if you could, you don't have to of course. So again, thank you for all the support. I also have my channel, my other channel, it's going to be What Ifs on Goku mostly, and it's going to be called Ampow Pal, it's, it's called Ampow Palski, my bad, but it'll be linked down in the description below and on the channels tab, so thank you so much for the support, and without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. Chapter 20, The Queen. Now, this has 18 plus content. You guys can read this one at your own risk. I'm not going to be reading this part. I basically what happens but or the most important part is that Issei was talking to Kuroka about how Rias was telling that she wanted to be his queen and then they just started you know getting down and dirty so let's go ahead and go to chapter 21 chapter 21 dinner and stories almost a month has passed and Kuroka's friend will soon arrive Issei was sitting on his bed thinking about what he'll say to Sir Zex Kuroka joins him what are you thinking about Kuroka says about how I'll explain eight members of the Chaos Brigade showing up, Issei said. Hmm, how about we strike a deal with them? What do you propose? What if I convince them to side with us, Kuroka said. I think that might be the only option. I'll call a Zazel and Sir Zex, but one question. What are their favorite foods? Why do you ask? Making their favorite foods will show them that they are welcome here, Issei said. After eating nothing but crap in the Chaos Brigade, any home-cooked meal is good. Kuroka replied. Well then, we better go grocery shopping at least a few times, since eight people are coming. The whole day was spent shopping. After all, that Issei contacts uh, Azazel and Sir Zex for a quick meeting, the three of them are joined by Sarah Fall and Ajuka. Thank you all for coming, so I won't waste any time. All you know, all you know that Kuroka used to be part of the Chaos Brigade, and knows eight members. She and I request you to allow the eight members to come to Ko and stay with us. Eight members of the Chaos Brigade? Are you crazy? Everyone said in sync. They're willing to cooperate with us in exchange for Mesty. Maybe even allies with us, Issei said. Kroka, we trust you, but we know nothing of the eight. Sarah Paul said. Two of them are Longinus users, as I'm told, Issei said. Everyone looks at each other and agree to let them visit, but they have to watch them at all times. Issei accepted the term, so hopefully so will his guest. Issei went home and started to prepare dinner with Kuroka's help since they would arrive in a few hours. A lot of food needed to be prepared, so thank goodness for magic. The food was done just in time. Issei sensed eight people outside, but one of them sent shivers down his spine while the other angered him. Kuroka? Issei said. Yes, Issei? I think they are here. Issei went to the front door and opened it and ready to defend himself. He sees eight people, but since it's dark, he can only see ones in front of him. Hey guys, glad you could make it. Come on in. Hey, come meet my friends Volley, Keo Keo, Biku, Arthur, his sister Lefei, Orphis, and the two girls in the hood are... Hold on. Girls, you're in our home, so it's safe to remove the hoods. As the girls removed their hoods, Issei was surprised to say the least. One girl was with, had short blue hair with green highlights, and the other has long chestnut hair tied in twin tails. That's better. Now they are... Irna? Zenovia? Issei said. Both girls looked at him, wondering how he knew their names. Have we met before? You don't look familiar, Zenovia said. Of course you wouldn't look familiar since he went through so many changes, especially appearance-wise. No, I don't suppose you would have been some time now, huh? Issei said. Issei uses magic to change his appearance from dragon to his old human form. Recognize me now? Issei said. Issei, is that you? Zenovia and Irina said at the same time. Yeah. How have you two been? Issei replied. Both girls hugged him. Their five five frames hugging Issei who's a foot taller than them. Issei just returned their hug and all three shed tears of joy. Sorry to break up the moment. That's my boyfriend. Also, how do you three know each other? Kuroka said. Oh, do I have a story for you? Issei replied. Well, tell me over dinner since it's getting cold. Sure. Come on in, everyone. All of us clearly need to talk, Issei said. Everyone sits at the dinner table. So let's hear the story. Well, almost 10 years ago, Issei, Zenovia, and I were in the same foster home for a while. The three of us practically became siblings until one day Issei ran away and we were left at the church, 
Irina said. Issei, please tell us why you ran away, Zenobia replied. Because one night at the foster home, I couldn't sleep, so I decided to walk around. I saw our foster parents in a room talking about sending you two away to the said church. I hid in the shadows just as they left the room. I snuck in and saw the paperwork with your names of it, and before I could find out where you two were being sent, they found me and tried to attack me. I jumped out the window and had to avoid getting killed. They came after me, but they came after me, but I lost them. And by the time I came back, you two were gone, and so were they. The house was burned to ashes along with any evidence of where you two were taken. I knew our foster dad, father, Freed, was crazy, but this was even insane for him. Everyone was shocked that the tragedy occurred. But I'm just happy to have you both back. So what happened at the church? We later heard that that bastard father, Freed, went insane and got himself killed, Issei said. We were actually sold to them. They trained us and used us as an experiment, Zenovia replied. That's because a couple of years ago, I found him trying to rape a nun, so my former team members and I killed him. He didn't leave us any choice. So what about the experiment? Is the Holy Sword Project by any chance? Issei replied, how did you know? Because almost six years ago, I was turned into a devil against my will. And one of my comrades was a test subject in that project until it was a failure. And they were all murdered except for him. He managed to escape, and I'm glad you did too. Freed was a part of it, Issei said. Lefei just said, wow. We ran away after we couldn't take it there anymore, but we did manage to learn a trick or two, Zenobia said. You two wield holy swords, don't you? Issei replied. Irina and Zenobia take out their Excalibur Mimic and Durandal. Please put those away. You know I hate those things, Volley replied. Sorry, Irina and Zenobia said. Everyone except Volley and Orphis talked. Arthur and Lefei Penadragon talked about their life in England and him being forced to marry against his will so he ran away. Lefay loved her brother more than her so-called home and was quite the mage while Arthur was a sword master. Buka is a descendant from Sun Wukong, was a traveler and loved to have fun. Keo Keo may look arrogant but was quite humble. He mentioned that since he wielded the true Longina spear the expectations were too much and became a target. Kuroka noticed that the tension between Issei, Volley, and Orphis. All right, so now that everyone shared their story, let's address the main issue here, Kuroka replied. All right, so the biggest one concerning everyone is that you all can stay here, but under the conditions that you'll ally with us and that you'll no longer be labeled as terrorists. You guys can live your life without having to run or hide. Issei said, who gave these conditions? Arthur replied, Sir Zex the Devil King, Lady Seraphal, Ajuka, and Azazel. Issei replied, oh wow, all four of them agreed, Lefei said? Yes, so what do you say? It's a damn good deal. Issei said, we accept, Arthur replied, that's great, I'm quite relieved. I do not know why you guys left the Chaos Brigade, though, Issei said, because the ones in charge were just using us after shoving the nation of a great cause down our throats and wanted us to use Orphus's power, Folly said. Speaking of which, how come the Dragon of Infinity is here? I thought the Dimensional Gap was her home, Issei replied. Great Red forced her out by annoying Bed with his stunts and tricks. She came to us by chance and stuck around with us partly because of the fellow dragon, Biaku said. And that brings us to our final topic, Drake. A red gauntlet appears on his Issei's left arm. Hello, everyone. Hello, Albion. I know you can hear me, Drake replied. Two white and blue metallic wings appear on Folly's back. It's been a while, red one, Albion said. I knew you were the white dragon emperor, Folly. I sensed it the moment you came here, Issei replied. So, you know about our fate, huh? I do, but fuck it, Issei said. Excuse me? It's our destiny to fight until the death, Volley said. I've died before, and I gotta say that I'm not a big fan of it, Issei replied. How dare you, Volley replied. Enough, you two, Kroka said. You're right, love. We're having a nice dinner, so let's not fight, Issei replied. If you don't mind my asking, how did you two meet, Biku said. Well, it was about a year ago. I had recently quit being a devil, and with Drake's help, I became a full-fledged dragon. I stayed in the forest to train, and that's where she and I met, Issei said. We just clicked, even though it took a while for me to gain trust, Kroker replied. I suppose that's true, Issei said. But there's one thing you didn't mention, Arthur said. What's that? Your fallen angel powers, Arthur replied. Everyone looked at Arthur, then Issei. I suppose I neglected to mention it. But I think it's only fair that you all know my story since everyone here shared theirs, Issei replied. Issei looks at his queen. She created a barrier to avoid any prying ears and eyes. All right. I'll start from the beginning, Issei said. 
Issei told them his story, from his parents being murdered, foster homes, surviving on the streets, murdered by Rainer, being turned into a devil, endured torment for five years and hanging on to his second life by a threat after each time, coming to his senses, fighting Riser after exposing him, removing eight pieces, turning into a dragon, half a year later having to fight Cocaville and his fallen army including killing Rainer's revenge, nearly dying by Cocaville's light spear, replacing his damaged heart with Rainer's with Kuroka's help, his former abusive teammates turning over a new life and forgiving them one by one, learning to new his used powers, becoming the first fallen dragon king. Everyone had mixed emotions and completely stopped eating, Irina and Zenovia giving off bloodlust, Arthur being disgusted and Lafay nearly crying, Bioko held his hands, his face covered by a shadow. Orphus remained expressionless, but her attention was all on Issei. Kuroka could feel Issei's aura fluctuate from the dark memories resurfacing. Volley was too angry but controlled himself. Keo Keo tightly gripped his spear to the point where his hands were shaking. And that's my story. Any questions, Issei replied. Do you mind if I kill Rias? Zenobia said. I would love to kill her. One small cut at a time. Excalibur Mimic can turn her into a tiny needle. Oh boy, Irina said. Tempting, but don't. It'll cause hell to break loose, literally, Issei said. How can you forgive them after what they did to you? Irina replied. I did so, so that I don't become like them. I want to be happy, Issei said. The last comment made them go silent. After a minute, so who wants cake? It should be done baking, Issei said. Cake? Orphus replied. You'll love it, Orphus. I'll bring it. Be right back, Kuroka said. As soon as Kuroka left, all the guys stood up. I'll say it before she returns. Issei, Kuroka is our sister by bond, so if you hurt her, then we will kill you, Folly replied. If I ever do that, I want you to. If she hated me, then more is life it isn't worth living, Issei replied. Kuroka comes in. Who wants cake? Um, why are you guys standing? All the guys go. No reason. They sit back down. Orphus just looks at the cake. Issei cuts a piece for her. As soon as she eats it, her eyes had a little twinkle in it. Her usually dull eyes now had light in them. She was enjoying herself, and her face held a smile for once. Everyone was happy that the dragon of infinity was in the form of a little girl with long black hair and looked adorable eating cake. Cake is not a lie. It is now my life, Orphus said. And that is the end of chapter 21, Dinner and Stories. Chapter 22, Well-Deserved Laughs So, Kuroka, how is your relationship with Issei? Zenobia said. The best. We never get mad at each other or argue. It's almost perfect, Kuroka replied. Almost? Lefei said. We don't have kids yet, Kuroka said. This really got their attention. So did you guys do it yet? Irina said. Kuroka held her hands 12 inches apart. Just then, Issei entered with drinks. Zenobia, Irina, and Lefei look at him, but then between his legs. Get a nosebleed, then pass out. The guys enter at the same time and see the three girls unconscious. What the hell happened? Volley said. Why do they have nosebleeds? And they are smiling, Keo Keo replied. Everyone looks at Kuroka, who is on the verge of laughing her tails off. Kuroka, honey, what did you tell them? Take a guess. Why? That's private. Issei turned red. Did they know about... All 12 inches in the broken bed, Kuroka said. Issei drops all the drinks and fell onto his knees and so did the others. No, no, Arthur said. Kuroka don't go around telling that, Keo Keo said. Just no, okay, just no, Volley said. No guy wants to know about the other guy's hose, Byuku said. It's not a hose, it's a dragon, Kuroka replies. What did he just say, Volley replied. Oops, please no more. I'm already embarrassed enough, Issei replied. <laughs> Messing with you guys is fun, Kuroka said. Volley now almost crying. Issei, please make your girlfriend stop. I ask you this as a fellow dragon. Please, Volley said. Okay, okay. Kuroka, I think they are punched enough. Also, why not show them what we worked on, Issei said. Oh, that's even better. Wake the girls up. I want to see. I want them to see this, Kuroka said. Sure. Duke replied. As they woke up the girls, everyone stayed down on the couch and paid attention to what Kuroka was saying. Okay, so this is important. As you all know... We should ally with the devils, so we should show them our power so they trust us. Understood, Crook replied. Everyone said yes and sink. So who's up first, Issei said. Byoko showed off his extending staff in a flying nimbus, I along with excellent martial arts skills. Arthur, Irina, and Zenovia showed off their swords. Colbron, Excalibur, 
Mimic and Durandal, respectively. Lefay was clearly a mage. Kao Kao showed his true Longina spear. Everyone was already knew about Orphis because, well, you can't hide that kind of power, but Volley was hesitant. Volley? Issei said. I'd rather not. I hate my heritage, Volley says. Is Issei, even we don't know just how strong he is, Croker replied. Volley, you need to give us a chance. Believe me, when I say that you won't like it, Volley said, tell you what. Show us and I'll show you what I am the fullest. Then we'll spar in due time, Issei said. Sparring, huh? Sounds fair, Volley replied. Everyone's thoughts. Battle maniac. Issei and Volley face each other and show their wings at the same time. Issei's scholar turns black. Eyes glow green. His horns released a focused flame and 12 black wings with a red center of each feather. Volley's appearance doesn't change, but 10 devil wings caught half of everyone's attention while the other half on Issei. I think it's time. My full name is Volley Lucifer, a descendant of the original Lucifer, Volley said. You hid your last name from everyone for a good reason, I'm sure, so I won't pry, Issei said. Thank you. And now you will honor our agreement, Volley said. Yes, I will, Volley, Issei replied. Ahem! Why should you two show off when I can too, Kuroka said. Of course, Issei replied. Kuroka takes a spotlight when she spreads her eight wings with slow flames of red and gold. She opens her eyes and the beauty captured everyone's attention. Even Orphus gasped. Issei once again couldn't contain himself and straight up kissed her after she powered down. All of the girls blushed at the sight. Both broke off their kiss after they saw everyone staring at them. Please don't stop on our account. It was just getting good. Ouch, Byuku said. Ina hit him on the head. Zip it. Issei, you really do love her, Arthur replied. Love. What we have is greater than some human word, Issei said. A flirt even in the presence of each other, Kuroka said. You know I have nothing to hide, Issei said. I just love being a queen. Jeez, get a room, you two, Lefay said. Then you'll have to wait at least an hour if you know what I mean, Kuroka said. Kuroka winks and everyone goes red again. All right, Kuroka, you torture them enough. There are eight bedrooms here. Kroka and I are occupying one of them. Feel free to choose your rooms, Issei said. Issei, Irina, and Zenovia share a room. Orphis and Lefaith share one. The guys sleep in separate rooms, obviously. The next day, everyone was having breakfast except for Issei and Kuroka. They began to wonder where they weren't awake yet. I'll go check on them, Volley said. The instant Volley stood up from the table, Issei appeared from behind and was carrying Kuroka on his back. Kuroka, are you feeling all right? Issei, what'd you do to her, Volley said. Better question. What hasn't he done to me in bed? <laughs> I can't feel my legs, Kuroka said. It's eight in the morning, you guys. Please, come on, Keo, Keo said. The two looked at each other in the back to them. We're not sorry, Issei and Kuroka said. As the two enjoy coffee and breakfast with everyone, they share stories in their experience like they were with their family. At some point, Orphis sat on Issei's lap and ate sweets. Eventually, the time came and they all had to see the three devil kings and the governor general of the fallen Azazel. They teleported and entered Serzek's office and started talking about an alliance. They all came to do an agreement without any issues, thankfully. Folly being a Lucifer was a shock, but a good one. I'm glad all went well, so and I have a suggestion. There will be one there will be a party to celebrate. Sarah Org's Bell's promotion to high class devil in the start of a raiding game, Sarah Fall said. He's finally a king, huh? I suppose it was a matter of time, he said replied. A cousin to the Gremory clan without any special powers becoming a king. Quite a rare feat, Kuroka said. Indeed. Even Lord Odin is coming to congratulate him personally. Cyrus Org's personality is that type that earns him respect and admiration from everyone, Suzek said. I know that from personal experience. He and I are similar. I didn't have any special powers either, but he was kind to me as a fellow devil. He earned my respect right there and then, Issei said. What's the rating game, Zenovia replied. A tournament. Teams fight, to, teams fight to win, to put it simply. You can all join, but there is an issue. Irina, Zenovia, and Arthur, you three wield holy swords, but you still are human, thus limited in the fight. Forgive me if I upset you, but I don't want anyone to take a risk that they shouldn't, Ajuka said. I'm also a human, and so is Lefei, Keo Keo said. True, but you have the true Longinus, and it's the most powerful sacred gear there is. One cut from that, and no devil will survive. Lefaithin can perform a great variety of magic, and her magic reserves are equal to that of a high-class devil. She has the chance to fight and survive, Ajuka replied. Can only devils join, or can fallen joins too, Irina replied. It's an open tournament. You can make a name for yourselves as you win. 
All you need to do is register as a king or any other One Piece in a team. You can join them by registering. You don't have to become a devil or a fallen, Grafia said. In that case, Issei, I want to join your parage, Irina replied. Same, Zenobia said. Can I? Lupe said. Guys, let's talk about it, Issei said. You have a mouth until the raiding game. Enough time to train. You have a month before the raiding game. Enough time to train, Zerzek said. I love a good fight. Who are we participating? Volley said. Bale, Phoenix, my sister Sona, Rius, and you guys so far. The Norse might join the next time because they want to see how it works since the great since the great was had ended. But Rius doesn't have a full parage yet, Issei said. Yeah, about that. Sir Zach said, Oh boy, here it comes. Rius asked me to talk to you about that. She's asking if you would be willing to team up with her. Issei just goes silent. I know you haven't forgiven her, but please, Issei, I only ask you to try. What do you guys say? Issei said, most hesitated to answer. I say we should talk to them about it. We don't have a full parage either, so teaming up might work, Kuroko said. Why can't I just say no to you? Issei said, because you love me so much, Kuroko replied. Too true. Everyone. Ahem. Both go at the same time. Sorry. We will know how strong they are, K.O. K.O. This would be a good chance to test our strength, Arthur said. Also, Issei, we found that sh what Shalva was up to. He was really trying to enhance devils to the point where they weren't devils, but super devils, Sir Zek said. I don't like the sound of that, Issei replied. Super devils are what we are at our current power level. That's one of the reasons why we're selected to lead the devils, Sir Zek said. I'm glad you did. The people love you, Kuroka replied. You're too kind, Ajuka replied. All right, so how about we go home and decide on who registers which piece? We need to become a full team, Volley said. Everyone go at the same time. Right. And that is chapter 22, Well Deserved Laughs. Chapter 23, Sharing the Memories of the Past. As all ten of them teleported to Issei's new house, there were five people already waiting for them. Should I start by putting salt lines under the doors and windows now if you're going to start breaking in, Rius? Issei replied. Sorry, we just wanted to surprise you, Rius said. Breaking and entering, definitely not a surprise, Issei said. Oh, hush you, you're upsetting her, Kuroka said. Okay, fine, but I'm putting some barriers up later, Issei said. So there you are, you're a new friend. Nice to meet you all, I'm Rius Grimmery, Rius said. My name is Akino Hajima, I'm her queen. I'm Azia Hergento, her bishop. I'm Kiba Hyota, her knight, and Sharone Tojo, the rook. Everyone just returned her greetings coldly except for Sharone's. Their names instantly remind them of what Issei endured, and they were having second thoughts about joining her now that they actually put the face-to-face -face name of Issei's former abusive master in team. From their looks and tone, Rias could tell that they knew about her. They know, don't they, Rias said. In order to make an alliance, we all had to share our stories. No lies, no details skipped over, Issei said. I see, Rias replied. Rias is saddened that even more people know of her actions. The killing intent coming from Irina and Zenovia was scary. Let's start. Only one month till the games. You five, meet Volley, Buko, Arthur, Lefei, Keo, Keo, Irina, Zenovia, and Orphis. The Dragon of Infinity? That Orphis? Akino said. Yep, the one and only, Kuroko replied. I know that you guys are nervous, but Orphis isn't the only reason, is it? Issei said. The four holy power signatures in this room are terrifying, Kiba said. We wield the true long giants and three holy swords, but fear not. We only use them on our enemies. We are allies here, so no need to fret, Keo Keo said. Thank you, Kiba replied. I'm also the White Dragon Emperor, FYI, Volley replied. And Team Rhea starts sweating bullets. They need to change the topic ASAP. So should we start planning? We can start off by seeing each of each other's strength, and then we decide to go on who can register as which piece, Akino said. I suggest sparring. Best way to know, in my opinion, Volley said. Sure. The basement door leads to the training dimension. Let's start there, Issei said. Everyone goes there and starts training. Arthur and Kiba were evenly matched, but learned from each other due to their very different techniques. Irina and Zenovia battled as usual. Orphis just sat there watching Azia, Lefei, and Akino practice magic since Azia really needed to learn new abilities and other than healing mag and basic magic. Byoko definitely gave Shirone a tough time with his martial arts. It was superior to her combat skills. Kuroka and Rish trained both in close combat. Kuroka had a bit of trouble holding back. Her sage flame magic overpowered Rhea's power of destruction. From the sheer difference in the energy alone, Rias was badly bruised and beaten. 
You all right? Crocus said. I'm down for the moment, Rhea said. Crocus began to heal her injuries using her sage magic senjutsu. If I had to guess then, I think you were almost trying to kill me, Rhea said. Sorry, I'm not used to this new queen power yet, Crocus said. We both know that's not the reason, Rhea said. You're right. A part of me is still angry at you, Crocus said. Can't blame you for that. The girls with the Excalibur and Durandal, their killing intent was strong. So who are they, Rhea said. Croca tells her their story. Rhea's was shedding tears now that she knows that those two were the only ones Issei had in his childhood and lost them again. Did Issei ever have a happy time in his childhood, Rhea said? Only when Re Irina and Zenobia were there, even though it was brief. I saw his memories and it hurt to see them rarely smile. Can you go ahead and read my memories? Maybe you can show him that I truly regret doing what I do to him. And I wasn't lying about anything for sure, Rhea said. Sure, Croker replied. She calls for Issei and he shows up. There's something Rhea wants to show you, Croker. What is it, Issei said. Croker places her palm on both of their heads. They're both seeing each other's memories. Issei saw all of Rhea's memories, all of the shit she put him through. It made him angry. He saw it the moment he left through her eyes. Her feelings, her nightmares, her and hallucinations that followed, her feelings for him, trying to remove the light spear with his bare chest and not letting Kuroka help. All of it was real, but the memories of her being so arrogant, foolish, abusive, etc. was obviously pissing him off, and it was increasing as it went on. Her memories of getting cheated on and then trying to use him just because Ryzer was no longer good enough. Rias was seeing and feeling everything he did from his parents being murdered, seeing their dead bodies, the smell of blood, the orphanage, father freed attacking him, forced to live on the street in a cold heat for years, being stabbed in the chest by Rainer. She felt her chest burn as if it were a hundred fires were lit. Seeing her abusive self through his eyes, his rage, the hopelessness, being used by just about everyone except for Grafias or Zex, Sona, and a few others but still feeling alone. The release of all of his pent-up emotions, fighting Riser, feeling death approach after removing the pawn pieces, the pain from transforming into a dragon, going berserk with all of the thoughts of death, destruction, and other negative emotions, being saved by Karoka, being happy with her, having a light spear damage his heart, having a heart transplant, then finally reunited with Irina and Zenovia. Met the new people whom he always calls family. He no longer even considers her as family, but then again, could he ever call someone like that her family? She was completely overwhelmed by it and she saw him. Drake. She didn't just see him, she was literally in his presence and felt his clearly suppressed rage. Greetings, Grimmery. You saw it, didn't you? Drake said. Rias couldn't reply. She was out of her right mind right now. She felt another source of anger. That's Issei's rage. You can feel it, right? Like he's suppressing it. Best to leave, Grimmery. I was polite enough to you at the hospital, but my self-control is running out, Drake said. She was forced out. Kuroka stopped and she was doing and both Issei and Rias backed away and opened their eyes. Issei let out an angry aura while Rias was all on fours trying to control her breathing. All of that was way too much and it only lasted a minute or two, yet it felt like a lifetime to her. She was crying when she caught her breath. Everyone saw Issei slowly releasing his bloodlust with an emotionally wrecked Rias on the ground. Kuroka gestured everyone to stay away. Kuroka, why? Issei said. He asked her. This is the first time he was angry at her. Why did you do that? Issei said. I am sorry, Issei, but it had to be done. You can hate me for it, but I don't regret doing that. You both need to see and feel everything, otherwise you'll never heal from that level of damage. I agree with her, partner. You need to heal yourself and said that you wanted to. Sometimes the healing process is more painful than the wound. Issei stopped releasing his bloodlust and calmed down. Rias, you okay? Issei said, no. Fuck. She continues to sob. You two should talk. Go outside, Kroka said. Both leave the training area and stand in silence for a moment. No need to worry, everyone. It's all good, Kroka said. They nod and go back to training as if the shit would have hit the fan. So you really were telling the truth about the nightmares and everything else, huh? Issei said. Yeah, Issei, was I a monster? You saw my memories, so you already know. I want to hear it from you, Rhea said. Yes, I saw you exactly how you saw yourself from my memories, Issei said. Compared to what you went through, my pain is nothing, Rhea said. Maybe it was a mistake that you saw them, Issei said. It was a mistake treating you like that and letting you die, <laughs> Issei said. I spoke to Dragon the Sacred Gear. Even he is livid. Us dragons tend to hold grudges, Issei said. 
You held a grudge before turning into one, but your anger really is like that of a dragon. How are we alive? I really don't know. Because Sir Zek, Sona, Grafia, and Syraorg are the reasons. I respect them as they respected me. Three of them are your family, and I didn't want to hurt them by killing you. Mother Nature knows that I wanted to, with every fiber of my being, but I'm over it now. You can thank Kuroka for that. If she wasn't here, I would have lost control and torn you all into pieces and mount the heads on spikes. She is the reason I let it all go. He smiled and blushed a bit. So you really do love her, Rhea said. I love her more than anything. She's the reason I want to find peace. I want to be happy, and I know that I'll never be happy if I don't let my anger go. It's not easy, let me tell you that, Rhea Issei said. So there's really no chance for me, Rhea said. No. Issei said. He shot her down instantly. He may have forgiven her, but the anger is still there. It's okay. I had my shot years ago and blew it. I shouldn't complain no matter how much it hurts. She thinks he had a chance? I'd call Albion shit on that, Drake said. Issei just said there's silence. Issei, I just want to know you are part of our lives, including my own, and I've learned my lesson. Have you now? Issei said. I felt everything you did all at once. You went through it all alone, and we were the cause of half of it. I'm sorry I'll do anything to make it up to you. You can hurt me if you want to. Just please forgive me, Rhea said. So she finally understands, huh? Kuroka, you work miracles, Issei said. I know, Rhea. You really did. Does that mean you forgive me? Under one condition. Rhea began to dread what it could be. Let me register as your pawn. But it's only for one time thing. Got it? I'm only doing it so that I can fight Riser and Syraorg. If you fought them, then you're screwed. Also, stop breaking into my house, and that goes for your team, too, Issei said. Rias began to cry and laugh. She dumped on him once again, but this time she only hugged him. Anything, anything you want, Rias said. Issei hugged her back, and both felt peace at last. Issei patted her on the back and rubbed her silky hair. They stayed like that for a while. You know, it's kind of pathetic now that I think about it, Rhea said. What is? Easy replied. That I was willing to become your queen or pawn or even your mistress if it meant that you would forgive me. Having two lovers would have been kind of fun, even if I was just a plaything, Rhea said. Polygamy isn't for me. I'm happy to have one lover. Two is way too much, Issei said. How come? Rhea replied. I'd sob someone of their... I'd rob someone of their potential life partner, and Kuroka will always be number one. I can't hurt her feelings like Ryze or her you. I really wish I got to know you better back then. Who knew that you were such a deep thinker and considerate, Rhea said. Being in love does one of two things, make you stupid or make you wise. It's up to you to decide. Now let's go back to training. This is becoming a bit too sentimental for me. Hey, if you're going to become my pawn, then what about the others, Rhea said. Kuroka can become your bush up. Bioko as a rook, Arthur as the knight. I'll be your only pawn since that's where all of the underworld knows so far the others won't take part yet they told me in advance before we came here they just want to deserve for now but i know they'll hate us will they actually join Rhea said i'll talk to them it'll be okay red Issei said and that's the end of chapter 23 sharing the memories of the past that is going to be where we stop there on chapter 23. So thank you guys so much for the support on this series. Seriously, it's absolutely been amazing. I'm glad people like the thumbnail so much. Like I, I did take a while to make because I really wanted to make it cool for this one because what if Issei is solo or rogue? It's just a badass concept, if you know what I mean. Now, I do want to do another series like this, but just switch up the title called like, what if Issei went rogue? Just because I'd like... I feel like Rogue would be more of a dark, but I wanted to do Solo because this story kind of lightens up at the end, but he also has that super angry moment, so I feel that I would call it Solo. And yes, I am 100% going to do What If Naruto Was Betrayed? I actually need to make the thumbnail, and I'm just trying to find the right story because I want it to be absolutely just hit the top notch in the emotions department, if you know what I mean, because I love feeding into the emotions at like the end of the like you know the story things like that i just love reading them and as for ann popowski my other channel i'm going to be doing a lot of goku upsets or just talking about harem anime or just anime in general on that channel so if you guys do want to subscribe to ann popowski it'll be linked down in the description below along with fallen dxd which is my third channel a lot of people are wondering what that is fallen dxd will probably be my shorts or if you guys want me to do something different on there just let me know what you want me to do with fallen dxd but for as for ann popowski which was my original main channel but it's my backup channel now that spartanic's my main technically it'll always be my main in my heart but whatever um but yes, Ampop Palski will be like, what ifs on Goku? Because I, 
I just love Dragon Ball. I love Naruto and I love High School DxD and that's probably the weirdest combo you ever heard, but I really do enjoy all of them. So thank you guys so much for the support. If you guys want to subscribe to all those channels, it'll be down in the description below. If you guys want to, you know, join that channel membership, I added a new one that's 099. It'd be crazy if you guys hit the join membership button. And thank you guys for the support. And without further ado, Spartanic Arts DxD out.